Welcome back, back on the Volvo again. Uh, since we now cleared all the faults, um, had a quick spin and it came up with uh, glow block number one and number three. Looking at the whole thing, I got an idea where they faulty because it's the ones you hardly can get to. So the whole intake has to come off. Probably a couple of other things because they're down here. Uh, it's persistent, so it's not a random one. It still could be a bad contact, but I think it's the glow plugs itself. And because they are the hardest to access, uh, yeah. So intake has to come off. Uh, probably a few other things, and then we'll just give it a try. I just notice everything is a bit oily here. So anyway, so we got it off and uh, I just found another one. I saw that error. You see that here? That's the actuator for the for the swill flaps and you can clearly see here it's gonna go here. These are the swill flaps and it's pretty oily down here so that needs work. That's probably the reason why it runs a bit strange sometimes because if they check it around, it doesn't make sense here. Why is this? Look at that. Oh dear. Okay. There is a history of these being broken every now and then and uh, people either completely disable those. It's leaking, we know that, so that's gonna come off. That's another job because you need to pull the injectors, otherwise you can't get there. All right, uh, see what we can do here. So, glow plugs, that's number one here. This is number one glow plug. What I don't like is, it's a bit wobbly. The plug was rather loose. Let's see what we find here. Uh, a couple of issues. So the the sleeve is loose, it's broken. Um, that's one. And the plug itself has uh, tried to make it possible to see it. So my wire resistance is about 0.7 and the plug itself has 3.4 so that's two and a half. A new one is in the region of that's a new one 1.3 total including the wires so we're gonna pull it out you need you need something to get there a normal socket is not good enough so just use something like that this, I think it's this one, and I got the feeling that someone messed around with because apparently the flapper actuator was out and it was catching something here so you could see that something wasn't right or it wasn't quite right. So that's just another job we need to do so let me get that one out or try to get it out and then we'll see. Oh, here we go, we got it out and it's measuring three and a half ohms, so it's, it's definitely dead. The problem is that the stepper is completely out of position, it's, it's miles away, so we need to cycle that somehow, because I'm never going to get it back in there. Uh, you can't turn it by hand, so the only thing you can do is actually cycle it via software. Um, plastic pintle is still there. The problem is you're not going to get it back. So either someone took it out or someone messed around with it and forgot or deliberately didn't put it back uh, because he couldn't cycle it. He hasn't got a software. Uh, because there is absolutely no way. Oh, well, maybe. Let me try something. 
So we got it back in place, I put it on the back, but I can tell you this thing is a bit loose. So either needs a new arm or we need to do something on that. Uh, so what I did, I popped it off here, just go in the middle with a screwdriver, it expands it a little bit and then it comes out. And then I put it on the back first and then I popped it in here. So it may work. I'm not entirely sure. It feels, it feels very loose. Wonder how long it lasts. We'll see. Uh, I need to come up with an idea here. Okay, so plug number one is done. Now we need to find number three, which is in a place you can't get because it's right behind this pipe here. So let me see if I can get there. So the onboard diagnostic was correct. It's faulty. Look at that, 19 ohms. So that's gonna come out as well. It's a bit more challenging than the other one, but uh, we'll get there. So, and if the key isn't long, or if the range isn't long enough, just take another key on the other side and take it out. It's a bit of a pain to get there, but. Uh, seems to work. I'm, I think once I'm there I'm checking at least the other ones to make sure they have a reasonable resistance. If they're too high as well, I just swap them out. And then it's getting the bust out. Yeah. Alright. The sleeve. The the, 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 um, the little plastic sleeve which sits on the plug is actually broken. On both of them it was broken, so I'll probably need some new ones. And um, if you put them in, put some anti seize on it, it helps. Okay, so two new glow plugs, number one, number three, because that's what we seen on the diagnostic. Um, there's probably other stuff which we need to look at. In particular we need to do an oil change but not today because it's freezing cold. Uh, so let's put the pipe work back and give it a, give it a crank and see how it works. All right. Yeah, Don't forget the mass sensor when you put it back otherwise you may have an issue. And also this plug goes to the bottom here. Everything is really oily here. Well, okay, let's put it back. Okay, everything back together. Hopefully all the plugs are back and then we'll give it a, give it a crank, see how it works. I'll hook up the diagnostic first. And, uh, so we can see right away what's going on here. Let me prepare everything and then we'll fire it up. Interesting pictures on these uh, flow plugs. I think that means don't do it yourself. Go to the garage. Uh, this one I would judge this as a micro light aircraft. And this is probably a general aviation aircraft. So you can't use them in anything flying. But they say original Bosch with a number on it. You can check it apparently. They are it says Bosch on it. I don't know. No idea. Made in France. It's a Bosch tour term. Not cheap, but they were surprisingly cheap, so about half the price than I paid elsewhere, so <laughs> I thought I'd give it a try. Okay, so we connected. We got 12.2 uh, volts, I got a charger on. This was the old error list here, so let's see what we have now. Come on. We have 6661 is number one and 6663 is cylinder number three. 40 kilo plugs, so it looks good to me. Uh, Fires up quite a bit better actually. Let's clear those. Looking good so far. Let's see, I have 
no engine, no check engine light. So my faults are gone. We need to do the drive cycle. Everything is green. So let's see. We'll do a shopping run. Um, come back, get it warm, give it a good spin, and uh, then we'll see. So we've driven about 50 miles. Uh, and now uh, we're going to check what's going on. I had to check engine light once. Uh, that's the interface here. You can buy those uh, on eBay. Alright, um, let's see. We have. Okay, we got pressure sensor, particular trap, particular filter, or temperature sensor, or faulty signal. Exhaust temperature faulty signal. So we have an issue with with the after treatment system somewhere. That's interesting. Uh, I was expecting something completely different. I've seen those before. If I if I go back to the old state, so this is all old stuff, which I cleared most of them. And. The swell actuator we fixed that yesterday. It didn't come back, so the problem is that we have we have everything is on fault. So what I suspect is probably a faulty connector or dodgy connector. If we go to vehicle communication ECM, um, let's see if we can see that. Let me find the right values and we'll give it a little fire it up and see what, what actually comes out. I know it's probably hard to see, but let's fire it up and see what we got here. So we got temperature sensor, EGR, pressure sensor in particular, this 18 hectopascal. So we're measuring 200 degrees, so why does it give me a faulty signal? Because it sounds about right to me, pressure sounds good to me as well. Um, if we look here, this is this is our EGR temperature, uh, sorry, this is our exhaust temperature, which looks about right to me, and the pressure sensor is differential pressure, I think, but it Makes no difference. We're at 200 degrees in standstill, and I can hear my lifters. Um, let's put some load on here. It's still, that's where we are. So we get readings. Uh, I would say we have a contact issue because going back to what we had before, uh, if we go back to our fault trace here, um, they all appear at the same time. Yeah, dri driving poor performance lacks power. Well, this is exactly what I found. Okay, so we need to check what's going on here because the message we get is faulty signal. It's not exceeding any values. So I think we just clear them. Take a good shot of that so I remember that. And then we just erase them and see if it comes back. I had it once. Uh, but I think it was only the temperature sensor which was faulty. So So if I go back to the communication At least our 
Our swirl actuator seems to work fine now. We still have a bit of a rough engine, but... No... No arrows so far. Okay, so that's uh, just another job to do. Finding where the connector is. I believe it's a joint connector somewhere. And uh, we'll find it. Right, that's, by the way, that's how it normally lifts if you're actually communicating. Okay, I'm happy so far with that. Um, one thing important on Volvos in general or generally on cars with lots of electronics, make sure you got enough power. Um, at the moment the engine is running, so I got 14 and a half volts, but if the engine is off, make sure you're not going to go much below 12 volts because otherwise you may have some other issues. Okay, uh, I need to figure out where that connector is because I'm almost certain it's a connector problem. If it's a single sensor, yes, you can have a fault. Uh, but I've seen historic faults with exactly the same. So, because if you go back, uh, fault trace, if you go back here, initial state, that's what we had, and we had a exhaust temperature, particulate filter, and pressure. That was exactly the same what we had initially. So it's a, it's an intermittent fault. And we have no faults right now. At least we know what it is, and uh, we need to look at it. That's what it is. Okay. Just another one on the list. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time.